Secure hybrid work. Security is the glue in everything you do. The adversary is playing with the human emotion. A malicious link was shared to a child to a Minecraft server, and that child shared that link with a parent. Now, the child was persistent throughout the day, pressuring the parent to download and install this application to Minecraft. The parent gives in and clicks the link, which downloads the payload, and they try to do the installation. The game begins. Now, this setup has the attacker on the left and the victim on the right. We're going to create a malicious payload called minecraft.pdf.exe. That last extension is going to be hidden in most Windows machine, and this is going to create a reverse shell back to the adversary's machine. Then we're going to go ahead and clone the Minecraft server. Now, Minecraft's not malicious by any means, but we're going to use it because it's trusted by most. And it's going to give the adversary a better chance for someone to click that link and download the payload. And then we're gonna go ahead and create a handler that's gonna set the payload for Meterpreter that's gonna give us a shell to access the victim's machine. Pretty exciting stuff. So let's go ahead and jump in here and let's get started. So we've got this link. This link could have been shared many different ways from anyone, in this case, a child. It looks like Minecraft, because it is. It was cloned and they download the payload. Now, they might get a little bit of a warning here, but remember, the pressure is mounting, and they go ahead and download the payload. The payload's now in their download directory. They go ahead and click the link. Nothing really happens, but on the other side, it certainly does. We now have access to that system. All right, now the adversary has access to the system. They can do all kinds of different things. So the first thing that we're gonna do as the adversary is we're gonna go ahead and migrate our process into explorer.exe. So let's go ahead and migrate into explorer.exe. So the process ID is 5164. We'll wait for this to finish. And then the next thing that we're gonna do is set up so we can actually screen grab whatever's happening on the machine. Now, we're going to do this manually, but imagine if malware was on the machine that was constantly screen grabbing everything that's on there. Now, this victim doesn't have any security really enabled on the machine. So this is going to allow the adversary to do all kinds of stuff. So we've done the screen grab. Let's go ahead and have a look at what actually has been captured on the adversary's machine. And look at that, exactly what's being shown on the victim machine. Let me make it a little bit bigger here. Incredible, that was so easy to do. All right, let's go ahead and close that and let's do a meeting that we have to attend. So we've thought we've downloaded the Minecraft server. We don't know if it installed or not. Remember, we're not a savvy technical individual. Let's go ahead and join our next meeting. We'll go ahead and launch WebEx. We're gonna join the meeting. We're gonna call this risky user and we're just gonna join in as guest. Now, once we do that, remember on the other side, we're gonna authorize or allow the individual. Now, this is somebody that's working for our organization. So we trust that individual and we've allowed them into the room and then we begin the meeting. We're sharing some confidential information here because this team is, is a competitive team and works with highly sensitive information. Now, as the adversary, I can go ahead and grab that screenshot. So even though I may not be able to get out of the network very easily and I, I, I don't have access to other systems, I've been able just to screen scrape what's happening on the victim's machine. Now, check this out. I have access to that article. Again, I can do continuous screenshot. Imagine if I automate it as well. Every few seconds, I take a screenshot of everything that's happening, org charts, competitive data, um, access to development code. I mean, the list goes on. Definitely risky stuff. Okay, so that shows that it's possible for the adversary to get access. Now let's go ahead 
and let's add some security because it matters with hybrid work specifically, whether you're on premise, off premise, at the coffee shop, in your home, doesn't really matter. Security is a concern. We now have secure endpoint installed. We're gonna disable it at the beginning here or else we can't show very much of anything because it's just gonna block it. Now we're gonna go ahead and stop this. We're gonna download the payload. Then I'm gonna come back and start it and then we're gonna to try to execute the payload and see what happens. All right, so let's go ahead and jump back into that Minecraft server. And again, we're gonna download that payload from scratch. And you can see the extension's gonna be hidden when we look at it in the uh, file directory here. So let's go ahead and restart the application. Then we're gonna go ahead and click that payload. Now you can see the extension's hidden here. It just says PDF. But remember, the user's not a sophisticated computer guru. They're just a user. They just want it to work. Now you can see that we are in a status of connected. We'll go ahead and double click. And we can see on the left side here, the adversary, there was a connection attempted, but then immediately closed. And that file is now disappeared. Why? Because Secure Endpoint caught it and flagged it as malicious and quarantined it. We could have also isolated the machine automatically, but we're gonna do that uh, manually here in a minute. You can see the MITRE ATT&CK framework, some information around what took place, the specific user that's on the machine, all good data for the SecOps individual that's troubleshooting and trying to understand what took place here. Now, no matter where that asset is, I can isolate it. And I'm gonna do that here. We'll go ahead and hit isolate. And you can see it's in that process of isolation. Now remember, we're in a meeting. So what's gonna happen here? Well, let's first check the history here to make sure that we see what we've seen in the dashboard on the endpoint as well. And you're gonna see minecraft.pdf.exe was in fact quarantined. Now what's gonna happen here is we're gonna automatically be disconnected from the meeting. So even though we've mitigated the risk, there was an indication of compromise or an attempted compromise and therefore high enough risk for us to quarantine the asset. Now we still have access to one resource, the secure endpoint management platform. And you can see here, if I go to cisco.com, it's, it's blocked. And then I've enabled a, an exclusion to be able to go to 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 just to show that that's available to you. And you can see, we're starting to see connectivity issues with WebEx. And it's letting us know that. And you can see here in the note, we've been isolated. And why? Because uh, manually isolated due to reverse shell detected. Now I'm gonna go and reverse this. And what's gonna happen is we can automatically reconnect. WebEx does all of that magic for you. Once the connection comes back online, it's gonna connect. But in the meantime, I'm without access to this meeting that I should be attending. So, why not pivot to another device and go ahead and join the meeting? No sense throwing that keyboard and computer out the window. That'll fix itself. We'll come back to that after. Let's go ahead and we've joined the meeting with our mobile device and we're able to continue the dialogue. As the meeting comes back online, because we're no longer isolated, we're gonna automatically join that meeting and we can disconnect that connection to the meeting using our mobile device. And we can see that here, right, as we jump in here. And now we can also jump to SecureX as an investigator and get a perspective of what might be happening. Is this just one asset or many different assets? How did it get in? Let's assume SecOps has already done that. But again, we've got a big picture view of what might be happening in our organization, whether they're on-prem or off-prem, work from anywhere, work from uh, the office or work from home. We don't care. We're gonna provide the layers of security you need. All right, so that gives us a little bit of perspective there. Now let's finish this off because you can't do hybrid work without zero trust network access. So we've got an untrusted asset trying to access a SaaS based service. And you can see here, we're being redirected to our login. We're gonna go ahead and put in username and password. It's checking our security device. Two-factor authentication's kicking in. 
it says, oh, wait a minute, you don't have dual device health on your machine. You gotta go ahead and install that. We go ahead as a user, we're able to get that installed if it wasn't part of our image. Now remember, this is an untrusted device, a BYOD device. Maybe that's risky. And in fact, it is based on our policy. We're saying you're not allowed because this is a personal device. So let's jump over to a trusted device and see if we can access that application. Go ahead and log in just like before. Now there could be two-factor authentication. There might not. Again, it depends on the application. In this case, it's gonna allow us to log in automatically because we've already done so before. And it's a trusted device. We're in our office. Again, remember that screen scraping could take place here as well and they're screen scraping our email. Now we're on a trusted device and we're gonna access a application just on the internet itself and we're gonna log in and this is gonna require multi-factor authentication. So let's go ahead and do that here. You can see it's pushing to my mobile device. I've accepted and I'm accessing the application. That's it, as easy as that. Again, I can use native TLS to access these applications and step up authentication or step down depending on the application itself. Now we're on a trusted device and we're gonna access a private application within our organization. This is going to require us to multi-factor authenticate. We've already put in the primary authentication. We're gonna go ahead and trust a browser. And again, I'm hiding that because it is a private application and we have access. As we round this out, we also access the internet and we need protection. In this case, gambling's not allowed, no matter where you are, anywhere in the world, on-prem, off-prem, at home, in the office, at the coffee shop, doesn't matter. And finally, you still need access from time to time using VPN, depending on the use case, and we got that covered as well. Let's go ahead and log in. We've got VPN access, and you can see Umbrella is active even when we're on VPN, providing that layer of protection, no matter where we are. Now that is secure hybrid work. Who else can provide that same level of coverage? No one.